Hey friends, I hope you are doing well. My name is Colby Sharp. I'm a fifth grade teacher in Michigan. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today I'm going to be telling you about some of the things that I have learned reading aloud to kids, to students during a global pandemic. I want to talk to you about what it has taught me, what I have learned, and I guess why it gives me hope for us going forward. <laughs> If you are new to my channel, new to my videos, please consider clicking that subscribe button down below. Uh, when you click that, if you click that little bell notification button, you will get an email anytime I post something new. A little context, I teach in a school in Michigan where we wear masks all day. I teach fifth grade, uh, all day we wear masks except when we're eating and except when we are outside for recess. And I was very worried about read aloud with the mask on, not gonna lie. I was worried about read aloud with my kids all spread out in a classroom, not gonna lie. Usually my kids, we have a carpet and we all sit on, even as fifth graders, we come to the carpet, it's lined with couches and chairs, and the kids come there for all of the books I read aloud, whether it is a middle grade novel, whether it is a graphic novel or a picture book, all of our reading aloud pretty much is at the carpet. So the thought of reading aloud with a mask mask on to kids wearing masks all spread out had me worried. I want to tell you now what I've learned in these first 20 plus days of the school year that has me feeling a lot, a lot better. Number one, I can do it with a mask. Yes, reading aloud 15, 20 minutes with a mask on is not the most fun thing in the world. Like it, so, it gets like against my lips. It's a little tricky, but it's really not that hard. I don't have to go like this. I don't have to go like this. It is, I, I personally am perfectly fine reading beautiful books like Jacqueline Woodson's Before the Ever After with my mask on. So the mask, as much as I was worried about it, I didn't really wear a mask like hardly at all the, the first, the last six months during the pandemic because I pretty much just stayed home. So mask wearing was something I was very nervous about. It's all good. Another thing that I've been thinking a lot about reading aloud to kids during this global pandemic are the words from Kate DiCamillo. And those words came from when she was the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. Those simple words, stories connect us. I don't know how we could have a classroom without stories. I don't know how we could live without stories. I don't know how a classroom could grow into a community and into something special without the stories that we have. Every single day we read aloud from a novel. We start our day with, with this book right now, Jacqueline Woodson's Before the Ever After, and every single day we end with a picture book. And so much of that time, that beginning and end, those stories really are bringing us closer together. They are creating discussions. They are giving us a chance to get to know each other. They're getting us a, giving us a chance to get to know ourselves so much better. So I'm thankful that Katie Camillo could put it into such simple terms, stories connect us. Another thing that I have learned reading aloud to kids during a global pandemic about stories is just how comfortable kids get during read aloud. Like I haven't, we didn't have like a big long list or set a bunch of norms about what read aloud is going to look like. Like I just started reading them books and I'll show you at the end of the video how I read them picture books. Uh, but basically it's with a data, with like a projector and I have like a document camera and I display the book on the screen and they listen and we talk about it. Uh, but what was crazy after about 12, 13 days, uh, I would be reading it and I'm all in. Uh, I would be reading it. And I looked out and kids were sitting on the floor. Even though they have these desks and these chairs where they sit, like as soon as read aloud starts, many of them just sit on the floor. I was blown away. I was, I don't know my, I just, I don't know why I love that so much, but it's just like we are all in so, at some point, just a five-year-old kid that loves a story. And seeing, uh, I think it's mostly boys in my room, but just seeing them like find their way to this hard floor uh, for read aloud has, has made my heart so happy. Another thing that I found that I love about read aloud is just being all in. I don't know how what words to put it in. I guess it's a performance, like me reading aloud. I feel like I am just like taking my read aloud skills to another level. Like I'm so much more in with the character voices. I am so much more in with my pacing, my pausing, 
the just the, the the way that I can make it from just words on a page and pictures in a book to just this event where they're laughing and they're shocked and they're just thinking it's just I don't know it's just been really magical and I feel like uh, I have to bring more energy I don't know if it's because I have a mask on I don't know if it's because they're spread out uh, but I will definitely try to try to bring this energy when I am reading aloud to them um, after a pandemic hopefully uh, sooner rather than later but who knows when that will be one thing that I feel that's helped me a lot is standing up like when I am reading aloud now, I have like a stand-up desk that my data projector's on. And so, I don't know, I just feel like I can move more. I, I feel like, I don't know, like my lungs are full, but I feel like just me get, bringing the energy has really increased the energy in the room, which easily could have been down a little bit with mask on and being spread out. So just that energy that it has has been really special. And I've really, really just been into it. It's almost like a like a pre-game speech before a football game. Just like sharing these stories with them. The energy I just feel is, I don't know, it's it gives me so much joy and, and so much hope. The the final thing that I have realized reading aloud to kids during a global pandemic is that if you are passionate about something, even if you're wearing a mask, even if you're not close to them as you used to be, like if you're passionate about something as a teacher and you're all in, like the kids will feed off of that. Like my kids are becoming nerds about books. Like they have joined the nerdy book club. They're all in. Like every time we get a picture book and every time I show them the case and if I forget to or if it doesn't have like a case that's different, then they get mad at me and they're like, Mr. Sharp, you didn't take off the, you didn't undress the book. They love it. They're starting to like dig the end papers. They're, they're just all in and, and it has so much to do with the way that I present it and it has so much to do with how excited I am. Like I think like science teachers that get kids to love science, it's not because science is awesome and science is awesome, but it's the way that they present the content and the way that we present reading is more important than ever. Like we need to sell books. We need to sell stories. Stories connect us. Stories matter like if we can teach kids to love stories and we can teach kids to learn how to better tell stories like they have so many more advantages in life a good storyteller has the opportunity to be more successful in just about every job and you know socially they have a, a chance to do better like we all love hanging out with people who are good at telling stories around the campfire or at the bar at that restaurant or in a living room like stories matter and I'm realizing that now more than ever, how much kids need stories, how much kids need to be in an environment that celebrates stories and what can happen when kids fall madly in love with stories and they have a chance to share them in a community that they are a part of, just good things happen. I'm noticing the more we celebrate story in here, the more that I'm all in sharing stories uh, even the more excited they are to share their own stories and to write their own stories. So we're getting there. I've learned a lot uh, teaching during this pandemic and I'm excited to see what I learned going forward. Um, keep reading kids stories, keep sharing stories. Now I'm gonna take you and just kind of show you my, my little setup that I have here. It's nothing fancy or special, but it seems to work for us. Okay, so I hope you can hear me. Uh, we have a bit of a mess, but this is like a kind of like a stand-up desk or like it's a high stool desk that we sit at. I sit at and my kids are all spread out over here. I have this document camera that I will sit right here and I'll usually stand and show them the book, undress it, kind of flip it around, talk a little bit about that. And then I will actually place the book here with my document camera and read them the story. It looks weird if I talk like this to the camera, but I stand up and do all kinds of fun things while I am reading it. I'm not the best at all of this yet. I'm still figuring out what it looks like to also share the story with my kids learning virtually. So I bought this tool and I'll, if I remember, I'll put the description down in the, uh, I'll put the link to what this is down in the description below, but it's basically just like this overhead camera mount and I put my phone in it and face it facing down and put it like right next to the document camera. So my phone's here, the document camera is here. And then I can actually record myself reading the book as I read it to my kids. And then the kids at home 
when I upload it to our learning management system, I, I can show them the video and I'm not like publishing it on YouTube or anything, it's in our private classroom. So this is our setup, it's working so far. Uh, I don't know, one day at a time, one book at a time, one story at a time, one magical moment with my kids at a time. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any tips for me, uh, please leave them down in the comments below. Thank you for sharing stories with kids. I think it means, it means a lot right now and they need it more than ever. So thank you. My name is Colby Sharp. Have an awesome, fantastic day.